This is a documentary of the Space Shuttle Challenger accident. Let's get right into it. On January 28, 1986, at the Kennedy Space Center, Florida, at 11.38 a.m., the Space Shuttle Challenger successfully had liftoff, but after 73 seconds of flight, the shuttle blew up, killing all seven passengers on board, even the school teacher, Sharon Krista McAuliffe. The explosion was caused by hydrogen and oxygen propellants that burned and blew the outer tank, exposing the orbiter to severe aerodynamic loads that caused the crew to perish. The boosters went flying out of the smoke cloud, but luckily were taken out by Air Force Range Safety Officer 110 seconds after launch. The temperature at the time was 36 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature was 15 degrees colder than any previous launch. The last telemetry sent to ground control was received 73.618 seconds after launch. Right after rocket ignition, a swirl of smoke is seen in between the right booster and the external tank. This is the start of the cause for the explosion. During investigations into the cause, three questions were being asked. What were the circumstances surrounding Mission 51L that terminated, that terminated the f flight even though there were 24 successful flights leading up to it? What evidence pointed to the right solid rocket booster to the cause of the accident than any other part of the rocket? Finally, what was the mechanism of failure? At about 62 seconds into flight, the control system started to react to the forces caused by the plume and began to counter those forces. The seven members that perished on that day were Dick Scobie, Commander. Scobie enlisted in the Air Force after graduating in high school in 1957. In 1966, he served in Vietnam as a combat aviator. Afterwards, he became a test pilot and logged in 6,500 6, 6, hours. 6, hours. In 1978, he enlisted in NASA's astronaut program. Michael J. Smith, pilot. Smith grew up near an airstrip in Moorhead, North Carolina, and never wanted to do anything but fly. In 1969, he became a flight instructor in the Navy and was thereafter sent to Vietnam. When he served, he earned numerous medals and citations. After servicing in Vietnam as a flight instructor, he logged in 4,867 hours then joined NASA's space program. Ronald McNair, mission specialist. At nine years old, McNair challenged a segregated library in his local hometown. McNair was, a, was the second African-American in space. Ellison Onizuka, mission specialist. Grew up in Kona, Hawaii. He earned a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering. He logged in 1,700 hours of flight time. Judith Renzik, mission specialist. Second American woman in space, she got a degree in electrical engineering and she helped develop radar systems for RCA. Gregory Jarvis, payload specialist. He joined the Air Force and was assigned to research on communication satellites. He had an honorable discharge in 1973. Christina McAuliffe, payload specialist. She was a teacher at Concord High School in New Hampshire. She, on the shuttle, left behind notes she took for her students for the world to see.